All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today and letting us into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. This is a KISS-related podcast by the board for the board. We hope that you enjoy. Welcome to episode 417 of the KISS FAQ Podcast. I'm your host, Julian Gill. Today there are five of us. Uh, We're going to be doing our next round of the... Well, the crazy death match uh, between the Elder and Asylum, so we'll see how that one goes. But there's some news to uh, to get through. So we've got Daniel staying up early or late. Got uh, no staying... problem. I had a long vacation. Yeah, I, I had to edit that out the uh, last episode, so let's not go there again. Um, <laughs> St. Louis, Kiss, Lonnie. What's up? Um, Marcus Almighty, Mark. Greetings. And yeah, we, we actually have a holiday this Monday. You know, it's Trader's Day for those people who celebrate it. Uh, we have a holiday Trader's tomorrow. Trader's Day? Trader's Day, yeah. Canada Day tomorrow. Trading Happy what? Canada Day to all my Canadians tomorrow. Yeah, and on Monday is July the 4th for the Traders. Mm. No, I'll be wrapping myself in my Union flag, drinking tea. <laughs> 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 While the fireworks go off, and I read all the comments on go. Facebook about animals being triggered by the Sitting fireworks. There dark, mad. <laughs> Shivering, cold, clammy. <laughs> all right, so there is actually some news to get into before we uh, do our insane um, rankings. Um, let's see, uh, first and foremost, Ken overslept today, and he missed out on uh, the Love Gun 45th anniversary. <laughs> um, wah, wah, wah. Yeah. Any, anyone order anything, and did anything stand out? And I think it was a big no for me. Um, the gold vinyl does look very nice. I will say that's a nice uh, shake-up of the colored vinyls. Lonnie, you get anything? I ordered a gold and a picture disc. I didn't, I didn't sleep in. <laughs> <laughs> I ordered a well, wait a minute. You're on wait, the actually, East Coast time, and I'm on, or West Coast, or whatever. You were um, alert and aware and primed and but ready hang on, to go. Hang on, hang on, hang on. So you said you ordered the vinyl and the picture disc, but I thought the picture disc was with the bu- bundle only. Well, I'm a sucker. So you bought the bundle then? You said, <laughs> then. Correct. Okay, all right. Just just kind of clarify that because for us, some people who might be oh, I didn't, realize, hell, yeah, I yeah. didn't, I yeah, didn't know I it was got, separate. I got, I got the bundle with the picture disc and I bought the, the gold record by itself. I didn't buy the other bundle. The other yeah. shirt looks really <laughs> shitty. Um, yeah. Some of the shirts look decent though. Yeah, yeah. I like I like there was like that three quarter sleeve shirt that looked nice. I don't see it. There's a couple of them that looked pretty good. I was thinking about I didn't get anything yet, but I, I was thinking about maybe a shirt. But the gold I'm not, I didn't I want to get the gold vinyl, but I will get it when it comes out into the store here because every one of these that will come out these 45th anniversary I've ended up buying them in my local record store, so mm-hmm. I don't need to necessarily race out and get it. So. Yeah, there's been plenty of them. So you didn't race out and order anything from no. Kiss Online. No. no. Daniel, any of them grab your fancy or are you just not, not going to bother? You have a nice T-shirt on, by the way. I like that. Yeah. I do my own T-shirts. You know, I just make something in Photoshop and then I mail it to a company and then they, it comes like this. So as you see, I've edited... Oh, illegal shirts, you mean? Illegal wow. shirts. Wow. True. True. They are the best. <laughs> Counterfeit. I mean, you can do. You can do, if you have the skills. You can I make it. You, if you see the eyes of Peter Chris, for example, I made them white. Looks way cooler than the original, and so on. So that's that's the best shirts. Uh, Kiss don't need no more money. I just gave them money for a ticket and stuff for a couple of weeks back. So I make my own shirts. All right, Ken. Since. I okay. saw your, your your unhappy face when it was all sold out. Um, did you end up getting anything after the fact? Yeah. <laughs> after the fact, I did get the gold LP. So, um, and from what I hear, it's made out of real gold. Um, so, <laughs> not really. <laughs> But whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I got that, and I, I bought the button, the I was there button, you know, um, and cool. those pins. Um, oh, you bought those, looking, yeah, those five-pack pins? or Yeah, the, the pins that had the four standing there, you know. On, oh, yeah, the front oh, okay, of the cover. yeah. That one. Um, so, anyway, that's, that's what I did. Um, but uh, I think I'm going to... Hopefully, uh, get a picture disc through a, a very good friend uh, that I know that might have uh, extra for me. So, 
uh, things are looking up from in that respect. Good. I didn't order anything, so uh, not able to help anyone out this time. Um, other news. Well, tonight's concert in France canceled yeah. last minute due to storms. So condolences oh, really? to uh, uh, all those folk who traveled and uh, were there. Case of our Sarah, as they say. Um, and then other concert news. Largo 75, the full freaking video finally dropped. And I've been listening to the remaster or a remastered you know, audio of it just continuously. Um, absolutely amazing performance. Peter Chris on drums, just thrashing away mm -hmm. with fills all oh, over yeah. the place. Jeans, bass, so <laughs> audible. Paul and the effects on the voice. You, 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 you know, people are bitching about the overlays. The three encores have been out there for decades and they all have the overlays. So what the hell were you expecting when the full thing dropped? Yeah. These weren't added in post-production. These were 1975 vintage. And but, it's al it's alive before, just on the cusp of really taking off. Mark? There is one thing that I did notice, though. I mean, and, and not to be one of these party pooper guys or something, but uh, oh. the, the thing is, <laughs> I, I have to say, it, it was a fantastic performance. I really enjoyed it. I was very oh, happy yeah. to watch it. But uh, they did have a bit of a, there was a one song, I think it was she, just, I don't know who, who their roadies were then, but, you know, they should have been slapped for the tuning there because they were way out of tune. Nobody could give them another guitar, they were way out in that song. Mm. But uh, why did they leave on so much damn delay on Paul's voice for like two of the songs that were like almost inaudible, his natural voice was all this A few echo, songs like, like that. It's like, man, they, they should have just like backed it off a bit. I understand. It's probably a monitor mix that they got the sound from, and you know that's how it's going to sound. I know, but overall, I think it was fantastic. I, I really enjoyed it from top to bottom. I think it was one of the better performances I've seen, like ever. My favorite used to be Kobo Hall, but I have to say this one is right up there for yeah. being fantastically performed. Just those little minor things, but I can't help it. I'm a musician. I'm going to pick these things out. So it's seventy-five. You really can't go wrong, Daniel. Yeah, I think it was a great concert, of course, but uh, uh, some of the editing could have been done better, of course. But but it's, uh, you know, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, a feed, you know, a, a feed yeah. at, at the show. So live they you know, put a lot of F yeah, live feed. So, um, of course, it could have been done better. They missed a lot of the uh, explosions and, and stuff that were going on in the end. They, they filmed... They have the, you know, sort of all graphics all over. Like so in Dubai, the, the original Dubai. What? <laughs> Dubai! Dubai! <laughs> Dubai! What's that? Dubai! <laughs> Ken! Dubai. Yeah. Anyway. But, um, and I think the way they filmed the, 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 the blood, you know, when he uh, drools the blood in ah, yeah. Is it Cobo Hall in 75? It looks awesome, really but they good. fail a bit during this one. But uh, all in all, what a great concert. What a great surprise for all of us KISS fans. Like yes. the best ever present we could have gotten. So Amen. I loved it. I loved it. Milani. Absolutely. I mean, a concert that's 47 years old that we're watching, you know, most of us for the first time. I mean, how freaking cool is that? You know? I mean, and, and it is. It is it's, it's fantastic. Julian, I forget who said it. Like, they're on the cusp of a live. I mean, they are hungry. They are you know, as, as energetic and as powerful as ever. And I mean, and you watch stuff like that. I mean, man, you look at that and like, you know what? That That's why I'm a Kiss fan. It's like, oh, yeah. you, those, you get those little reminders every now and then, like something like that. And for me, it's been like listening to, to Donington, with the, 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 the reunion shows. Man, that was such a fun time. Like these, these are examples of why I'm a Kiss fan. You know, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, to, today, it, it, you know, Sometimes you you're, you're you kind of shy away. I'm like, oh, I'm embarrassed to be a Kiss fan. You see what Junior Paul might say on social media or something like that, or you know, we release some. Today's not a good example. There's some good merchandise today, or you know, we release just some crap merchandise. It's like, oh, it's embarrassing. Like, and but, you have all the <laughs> it. Yes, sir. <laughs> I showed it off. But things like that, and, and you know, it's, it, it's good that things have. It's good to. Have things like that come out that are that old, um, and and 
things we've been wanting for a long time. It's like, yeah, that's why I'm a Kiss fan. And and the great thing too is that they did Ladies in Waiting. I was so happy yeah, that they did that, that instead cool of Parasite. That? Cool. that was the other because yeah. they had the one that, set that's on one of the Kobo. That's on one of the Kobo. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just yeah. One, of the, one of the nights they did Parasite, yeah. and the other night they did Ladies in Waiting. Right, but I was I was glad that they did Ladies in Waiting. That's not I I don't get to hear that too often. So. No, and it's a cool segue into um, nothing, nothing to lose. To lose yeah. So, a very cool performance, Ken. Yeah, like you guys, uh, it was it was great seeing the full show. Yeah, and the overlays. The first the first when I saw the these the overlays, you know, here and there, it was like taking my attention. It's like it's bothering me, but then I was able to just it, it kind of ignore that and mm-hmm. and then enjoy enjoy it. Um, I think I've watched it a couple of times already. And, yeah, uh, same here. Yeah, and uh, I mean, uh, yeah, great audio on it, except for those, you know, a few songs on the vocals where that mix was messed up or whatever it was. Um, but uh, otherwise, yeah, it was great. The energy was there. This is the true, you know, kiss we all, you know, why why we love them. Um, um, this is how it all started off, and now they were just coming into their, you know, too fine form and getting close to their peak, right? Um, <laughs> that many years ago. But uh, the other thing is, uh, yeah, I really love, you know, Black Diamond, uh, you know, one of my favorite songs. So uh, just a great, great job on that one too. And no, the whole concert was great. Yep, so super fun. So thank you to the person who uh, put that up on YouTube for everyone to enjoy and revel in and argue about. And um, I, I just couldn't believe some of the comments on the FAQ about it. it, it it's like enjoy it for what it is. It's a moment in time. Oh, they haven't yeah. they haven't done the bulk of the recording for Destroyer at this point. <laughs> and just to hear what a monster all of them were as players, not just Peter. I mean, Peter, I, I rave about because it's really nice to hear those isolated elements of everything that he's yeah. throwing into the mix but Gene's playing That's up a base. storm Paul's yeah. in full command you know he's found his place as you know the rock and roll circus leader uh, the preacher and, and he's all in and Ace you know is just playing AC fluid you know lead punching in and the the teams you know phasering uh, you know everything is just so cool to hear and that's what makes a, a soundboard great is that it is imperfect because they're mm-hmm. running around on stage mm-hmm. and yeah. paul's not playing sometimes and those video screens were very new technology so someone was going to town and you know just yeah. Just putting them up on the screen. It, it wasn't all thought out. They didn't have a cue sheet for fire here, puking blood there, et cetera, et cetera. So very, very, very cool. And, uh, you know, a lot of stuff's coming out at the moment, which is really nice. There's a, a, a preview up for um, um, Unplugged New York. Uh, going to debut oh, yeah. later today yeah. as well. So, oh, really? And then, yeah. all, and then all the stuff from 92 that's just uh, been up. So lots of exciting stuff. All right, let's get into this uh, album matchup because it is, of course, the Elder versus Asylum. And the way this insane train wreck of a, you know, studio album death match goes is that all the songs of one album go into a green cup. All the songs from another album go into a red cup. We shake them up and then we just randomly pick them and uh, they go head to head against each other. So there is no ranking, you know, no seedings. It is just completely random. And the winner will go into the pink cup into the next round. And if there's any leftovers, or so there will be one because the elder has 11 tracks and asylum 10, we'll go into a white cup for a runoff round before joining everything in the pink cup of mystery. Mm-hmm. Very nice. <sighs> All right, let's get on with it. All right, first song coming out of oh. Asylum. I went with Asylum first because yeah. I'm biased. And uh, right. hopefully we won't have any tough uh, ties today <laughs> that are required. So we're starting off. Radar for Love versus... <laughs> Oof. Uh... Oh, it's a short song. <clears throat> Very short. Okay. I. I. <laughs> All right, Daniel, get us started. <clears throat> I think Rare for Love is one of my least favorites off of uh, Asylum, while I is one of my favorites of The Elder. So for me, it's, there's just no 
I mean, I is a way better song than Raid or For Love. So I, I'll go for I. My vote goes to I. Lonnie. Yeah, I agree with, with, with Daniel 100%. Radar for Love is one of my, le- one of my least favorite songs of Asylum, while I is maybe my favorite, maybe maybe my favorite song off of off of The Elder. But it's it's I sounds more like a Kiss song than most anything else on The Elder. It's very, it has that anthem type feel to it. You know, it's, it's going after what you want. It's whole, it has a whole Kiss, really classic Kiss vibe to it. So I me, do have to, uh, yes. I do have to add the lyrics are a bit too much, you know. Uh, I, I I don't cheesy. Drink, I don't. Yeah, cheesy. You know. It's kiss. Some of the G. Yeah, yeah, but but, but yes, more of this you know, preaching, the preaching <laughs> part from G. I don't like. I don't like that. If they could, well. The dog agrees. Dog? It must be Mark's dog. Yeah. <laughs> dog agrees. Doesn't like the kiss have a cute podcast. shadow. <laughs> shadow. Uh, but. Uh, other than that, it's just a great song. All right, so you went with uh, you went with I, Lonnie went with I, Mark. Okay, sorry, I have to put my mic back on there. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, <laughs> Asylum is my one of my favorite oh, oh, albums oh, oh, of all time. So oh, okay. <laughs> just because it's your favorite album doesn't mean the whole yeah, album's great. But but, but, but I but I got okay. but I gotta say I gotta say, Radar for Love is pretty bad. Okay, and I have to admit that. Uh, I is is a good it's a good song. It's probably the best song on that album. I'm one of the best songs on that album. Check. So but you know, I mean my 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 heartstrings are tugging at, you know, Radar for Love because, you know, Asylum overall just destroys uh, like the elder like top to bottom. So we'll There's see like no way that. they're even in the but, same but, league. But, we'll but does Radar that. for Love destroy I? But that's what I, I know, but that's what I'm saying. But but because of the the competition of the song itself <laughs> I will go with I. I is wow. a better song. Ooh. Okay. Mm, Kat, your, votes, your, your vote's now meaningless, so let us know. It was, yeah. I mean, I, I, just to say that I, I agree <laughs> wholeheartedly. <laughs> and and this song I brought up last week in our prior episode about five overlooked Kiss album tracks, and that, that oh, was yeah. one of mine. What, Radar for Love? <clears throat> no. When you... Radar for Love. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Overlooked. No, no, that that was the other episode where it's the yeah. uh, five but, overlooked but, songs but, that you should be overlooked. Yeah. Or whatever. Lonnie, yeah. Lonnie, submitted, <laughs> Lonnie submitted a list for that show, but it wasn't there. I guess you had to work or something. But he had one song. I want to hear your explanation. You had one song off of Revenge. I was thinking, Hotter Chrome, take it off. But it was every time I look at it. Can you just explain that part for us? I can explain it. You know, I. I think every time I look at you should have been a hit. I know it's the ballad off of Revenge and, you know, this and that. I, But with as much attention as Forever got, I think mm. every time I look at you is actually a better song than Forever. I think that oh. every time I look at you should have been as big as Forever, if not bigger than Forever, in my opinion. And for whatever reason, the, you know, the record label, um, Mercury Bad at the time... Bad timing. It was just it was bad timing, and they they weren't ready to push that um, when that song came out. So I think it, I think it's very overlooked. I think it could have been a very very big hit for them. And there, there's a reason why in '95 they played it on MTV Unplugged because they know it's a great song, or else they wouldn't have showcased it the way they did on MTV Unplugged with the with the strings behind them and everything like that. Um, I, I and that's why it's on there. You know, could I could I have picked three or four more songs off Revenge? Absolutely, but. You know, there, there's other good Kiss songs out there. <laughs> Chen said, Chen said last episode, I'm surprised he didn't pick five off of this. <laughs> and I go <couldn't> have <laughs> Yes. All right, I'm, I'm going with I, because clearly it's better, even with the swinging, hand-snapping Snaps. section. Yeah. Uh, and I, and I love, I actually do like Radar for Love. It's it's fine. It's a bad uh, attempt. I, I is Zeppelin. better. Yeah, all right. Next song is, um, okay, let's get rid of this one early. Just a boy. Just going up against. Uh, King of the Mountain. Oh, oh my God. Those are quite. All right, Ken. Sorry to have that. around the room. Yeah. You know, I like uh, Just a Boy, um, actually. Um, but. But it does. It has no match to. No match to uh, King of the Mountain. Just. 
total, you know, obliteration there. Uh, King of the Mountain is a great song. Great, great um, track off of Asylum. So it wins. King of the Mountain. Mark. Well, you, th <laughs> this should be no surprise here. I mean, I know, but think gonna... hard about it, please. Okay. Well, Justin Boy does have some very innovative guitar playing in it, but no, okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I would de I would definitely say King of the Mountain. I've always said it's probably one of the one of the best opening tracks Kiss has ever put on an album, in my opinion. And I, I've always loved Eric Carr's drumming on that, just fantastic, and like almost next level drumming for him on that. Uh, yeah, all the way, King of the Mountain. Bonnie. Yeah, hundred percent. It's King of the Mountain. It's it's not even a question. It's just the boys. A little strange, but in King of the Mountain is oh, yeah, one of my favorite songs off the of silence. Strange. Yeah. strange. It's one way to put it. <laughs> yeah, right. definitely King of the Mountain. Daniel, our votes don't count. It's okay. Yeah, you know, last episode uh, I mentioned this as one of the most overlooked Kiss songs. King of the Mountain, you guys out there, if you haven't listened a lot to Kiss, if you need some, you know, deep cuts, go to King of the Mountain off of Asylum. It's just a 10 out of 10 song. And it buries that crap from the elder. <laughs> Damn right. King of the <laughs> King of the Mountain. After getting into Kiss and that being my first album, putting that tape on and getting that, wow, that sealed the deal. Oh, yeah. All right. Next one nice. coming out of the asylum jar. Who wants to be lonely? Mm. Versus. <laughs> I don't know why I wrap these so tight. Mr. Blackwell. <laughs> wow, that's it. That's it. That's interesting. <coughs> Who wants to be lonely versus mm. Mr. Blackwell, Daniel? Who wants to be lonely? All the way, uh, Mr. Blackwell. I don't care for the chorus. I think it sounds kind of crappy. Good night, well, or Mr. Blackwell. Uh, we can, and then they sound out of tune. We can tell. I just hate that chorus. Uh, so, Who Wants to Be Lonely could have been one of the most overlooked Kiss songs. Uh, it actually was a single, but it got no airplay, at least over here. Uh, uh, it's one of course better songs of, of the 80s i would give who wants to be lonely you know like nine out of ten or ten out of ten great song ken yeah i agree uh who wants to be lonely uh mr backwell is kind of a one of the least or maybe the uh less worst or worst worst songs <laughs> or whatever uh on uh on the elder uh Probably one of my least favorite on um, the other, so it loses. Yeah, Ani. Yeah, it's who wants to be lonely. Who wants to be lonely is one of my, you know, more favorite. Maybe my favorite track off of Asylum and oh. um, Mr. Blackwell. It's just, it's it's a lot of time. It's a skip if I'm if I'm listening to it. It's it's it it doesn't do it for me at all. Mark. Uh. Well, I mean, obviously, I'm going to go with who wants to be lonely. I mean, come on. I, one thing I find very interesting, of course, is that Daniel's mentioning how it was a single, but it didn't do anything in Scandinavia. Over here in Canada, it was being played like constantly on, okay. on, on like much music and stuff like that. You know, you, you can't help but admire Paul and his dancing ways there through the hallway with his neon gloves and everything. It was it was just fantastic. You know, just absolutely ten out of ten. The, the song is probably one of his better written songs that he's done. And I've always said Paul Stanley as a producer, I've always knocked him for like, you know, stuff later. But oh, this was, the, but this was the, an album that he did a fantastic job producing on. So for sure, you know, who wants to be lonely? And Mr. Black Blackwell is just weak, just absolutely terrible. And again, another example of Bob Ezrin's stupidity and adding yeah, that to a record. True. Well, Mr. Blackwell is just playing with the, the the notes of God of Thunder and rearranging them. It's the same. It's the same notes. And <laughs> failing. Essentially. Yeah. And it's the same style of song. So it's just a carbon copy of what was done before. Um, that said, I like the attitude of it. But come on, who wants to be lonely? Early '86, new Kiss fan. That video. That video. That video. Yeah. Um, that yeah. video in slow motion. Yeah. Pause. Pause. 
rewind. Um, no, it was a great video, great song. I, I still like it to this day. It's it's powerful, and it, yeah. it's got a, a really good message. It's a great Paul vocal, a great Paul lyric, fantastic guitar work and drumming. Um, just really, really good. So, duh. Unanimous. All right, the next one out of the asylum jar. Trying to crank us along here. Secretly Cruel versus... Odyssey. Well, that's an easy one. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. All right, Mark. It's going to be difficult <clears throat> later. Well, you know, if it was a secretly cruel version done by the guy who did that cover version of it, it would be a landslide, I think. I love his version of it that he did. I forget what this guy's name is who did that. But, uh, uh, you know, tip of the hat to Double him. Double Virgo. Double Virgo, there you go. Mm, yeah. uh, that, that was a great version of it. But th that said, I still like the song. I mean, like I said, this is one of my favorite. This is my favorite non-Kiss makeup album, period. And really, Odyssey is just them trying to do some kind of Broadway song. You know, really ugh, just horrendously written. Just, ter again, Bob, man, come on, man. I know I, I know, I know I give you shit all the time for your production, but what the fuck were you thinking, man? Like, this is just terrible stuff on this record. And, and this especially, just, like, what was he trying to go for with Odyssey? I, I don't get it. It's like, what, what do you want people to start crying their eyes out? Like, oh, it's so touching and, and soulful. Like, it's just shit, okay? Crap, okay? Absolute horseshit, okay? Secretly cruel all the way. It was serious. And when you're pandering to critical acclaim, you grab onto, oh, Tony Paris happens to have a critical, uh, you know, a a serious song, you know? Mm -hmm. And when you're delusional, you get wrapped up in that. Lonnie? Um, yeah, it's secretly cruel. Um, Odyssey's just, it's, 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 again, it's strange. Just like, just a boy, it's just strange for a kiss song. And, Secretly Cruels, it's it, it's not one of my favorite Kiss songs, but it, it's a good it's a good song. It's a good Kiss song. So I mean, it, it's an easy choice. It's Secretly Cruel. Ken. Yeah, it's it's gonna be Secretly Cruel. Um, Odyssey should have never been picked as a song to you know from outside, and then it should should have been never sung uh, like it was, uh, like Paul Stanley sang it. So. Yeah, it's crazy. Secretly Cruel wins. Daniel? I think Odyssey could have worked for another band. But not for Kiss. <laughs> you know, band. not for Air Kiss. Supply, Kiss. maybe? Uh, yeah, I think it's <laughs> no, way too much overthinking what they should have done. Uh, so for me, it's Secretly Cruel. I truly enjoy every gene song on asylum i don't know what it is because on animalize I, I think his songs were weak and on crazy nights they were so so but i like every gene song on asylum i don't know if it's because it's one of my first albums or whatever it is but but i think this is a pretty strong song so Secret yeah, cool. Secretly Cruel is a good dirty rocker in, you know, Gene's wheelhouse, you know, hearkening back to, say, rock and roll over era much more. Odyssey, I actually, I've, I've never had a problem with Paul's vocal. I, I'm impressed that he even tried it. Um, and he tried a lot on that and he put himself out of his comfort zone on the album. But in terms of that, it's still a failure compared to Secretly Cruel. Um, it's, it's just far too precious a song. So Secretly Cruel. Precious. Uh, unanimous. My precious. My precious. All right. So moving on quickly. It's going to be. Anyway, you slice it. Anyway, you slice it. Versus. The oath. Mm. That's a toughie. Ooh. Ooh, that's going to be hard. Okay. All right, Mark, start us off. Oh, of course, you have to go to me. Okay. Um, Let's hear it. This, honestly, I, 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 and people know this from prior episodes. I've, I have some difficulty sometimes with Gene's songs in this time period. 
I find that he's, you know, slacking <clears throat> is a nice way to say it as far as the songwriting goes. Uh, but this is a, not an example of that. I, I really liked this song. The first time I ever heard Anyway Slice It, I was like, wow, this is actually really good. Like, I, I thought it was pretty upbeat, catchy. It was, you know, nothing out of the, you know, out of, you know, left field, like crazy or anything, you know, technically fantastic, but it was a great song. And then The Oath is really probably the only example of a song on there that you could probably sit there and say, wow, this is a really good rocking Kiss song on this album. Uh, the only thing on The Oath that kind of makes me kind of go, ugh, is when they start doing the falsetto singing. That was like, oh, I don't know. That That's where he kind of, kind of loses me a bit. Um, my one side is telling me to go with the oath, but uh, honestly, I, and I'm going to explain why just really quickly here. I'm going to go with any way you slice it. Why? Because I think it's more honest, a song. I think Gene sings it really good. I, I think it's, I like the power of it. And while the oath is a good song musically, uh, I just don't think vocally it's as good as Gene does on any way you slice it. So slice. All right, I'm going to go the oath because of my quest for the elder and having to buy that damned 45 and finally getting it through the post, my first mail order purchase with a money <laughs> order, um, just that connection to it, putting it on the turntable and that comes on and I'm like, yeah, this is powerful. This is clean sonics. This is awesome. The whole album's going to be like this because the B-side on that was uh, yeah. Escape from the I Island. I, I can't wait to get finally find the copy of The Elder. Um, so <laughs> that was just such a moment in my personal history that Slice is just as good. I could say the same things I said about Secretly Cruel about any way you slice it. It's Gene, a good Gene song, but The Oath is just way too powerful for me. Daniel. Yeah, I think anyway, you slice it would, would be it a lot of songs off of the elder, but uh, not the oath. I think the oath is probably my favorite song off of the elder, um, especially the riff. I like, I love that riff. And when I heard, um, when I saw the vi video from the cruise when they did that song, it just uh, underlined that it was a great song. Um, on the other hand, anyway, you slice it. I think it's a good song. I'd give it like seven out of ten. Good Gene song, um, but I think the Oath is a little bit better. Even though when I listened through the Elder this week, there are, as Mark mentioned, a lot of weak parts in in, in like the falsetto singing and stuff like that. But all in all, I think it's a better song. So, hey, all right, let's see. Good yeah, you know, being a Gene fan, you think I'd go with the Gene song, but no, uh, it's it's you know, anyway, slice is a good song, but it's not one of his greater songs. Uh, so yeah, and the the oath, oh, I just love the oath. Um, it, it's just a total great rocker. I mean, it just works. I mean, from the first time I heard it, so I go with the oath. All right, Lonnie. My vote doesn't count, but I'm going with the oath anyway. Uh, All votes count. I'll count your vote <clears throat> twice. Oh, wait, it still wins. <laughs> still doesn't matter. <laughs> but no, I'm going with I'm going with the oath. Anyway, you slice it is is a good is a good Jane song. I you know it's really very 80s sounding, very fast paced. It sounds it sounds like Kiss in the 80s. Um, but the oath is is superior. It's you know, you can you can see why the record company said no, no, no. We're we're leading off the album with the oath. We we've heard this, and uh, we're we're rearranging the song. Thank you. Nice, that guitar, just the tone of the guitar and that riff. Oh, mm -hmm. all right. First one up out of the uh, elder jar is only you mm -hmm. versus. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, we haven't seen fanfare yet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that even done? I hope it's not getting a free. Ooh, trial by fire. Lonnie, yeah. since your vote didn't count the last one. <laughs> trial by fire. I'm going to go trial by fire. It's a tough call. They're both very. 
they they have similar kind of rankings in my head. I can we just put them out there. They're both kind of middle of the road for me, but I'm, I am going to go trial by fire. I think it's a I think it's a better song. Although only you is, is decent as well, but it, it's it's a tough call. I'll be interested to see what you guys say, but I'm I'm like we might be a little more split on this one than we were on some of the others. Ken. Yeah, this is a very difficult one. <laughs> I really like Trial by Fire. I really like Only You. So um, it's going to be kind of a toss up. I think it's a great Gene kind of believe in yourself kind of thing again. Um, I'm going to I'm going to go. Eh, I'm, I'm <laughs> going to I'm gonna go with Trial by Fire on this one. Oh, I'm surprised. I, know. <laughs> I do love well, Only You. I, I like both songs. Could be a tie. <laughs> I like I like both songs as well. I have my list on, on the <clears throat> right side of the screen here, and Trial by Fire and Only You they are next to each other. So I, I really didn't decide which one I I, I ranked above the other. But uh, uh, I listened to Only You today actually, and there's a weak part. I think it's the bridge that goes on way too long. So. That puts trial by fire a bit higher. I think it's a more, you know, well thought out song, and the parts works better. Um, so trial by fire. Okay, Mark. Yeah, I mean, cool. th 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 is there really any need to ask? I mean, trial by fire is a much better song. I mean, only you. It's it's okay. You know, it, uh, you know. It, I'm finding it interesting over by saying like songs that are so mediocre, or like you know, it's, you know, it's a good song. It's it's not good. I mean, only use all right. I mean, it, if you compare it to any other songs on other albums too. It wouldn't be looked at as uh, that highly. I don't think either. I mean, again, isn't my hatred of Bob Ezra nuts clouding my <laughs> yeah vision of this clearly? But, but you know, I mean, only use. Uh, am I? Correct me, Julian, if I'm wrong, but isn't this something that Gene took from like his past, like yeah, you know, it's an old 20 song. years yeah. past? It's, it's and, Eskimo yeah, song. I mean, yeah. yeah, it's just a rehash of something that he had in the I past. I like the Eskimo and, song. No, yeah. it, it, yeah. don't listen to Eskimo song. It, there are similarities, but it's not a rehash. Well, but he, he got the idea from somewhere, and it was, it yeah, was from good, there, Good riffs yeah. never die. They get recycled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, yeah. it was covered Michael, by one of... Michael Shanker yeah. does that, too, so... Uh, it was but, covered by a German girl. What was her name? Uh, Doro Pesch. Doro. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Who, who, who did a superior version to the one that uh, Gene did? Clearly, uh, had yeah. the uh, the third. I think the third verse on it, and her performance of it was fantastic, and his oh, yeah. production of it was also very good with uh, Tommy and uh, Pat Reagan. So, um, my life fire is is the. Yeah, I I just happen to love Gene's vocal. On only you, and yeah, I'm going with that because vocal. my because yeah. my, my my vote doesn't matter. And trial by fire, I'm trying to imagine in my head right now, and I'm just getting kind of it's just so middle of the road on asylum for me that it falls into the bottom half of that album. Whereas only use the top half of the elder. Well, <clears> that doesn't exactly say much. So since it doesn't matter, I'll just be completely honest and not an elder fanboy. So, <laughs> all right, next up, loves a deadly weapon, versus. Escape from the island. Uh, sorry, Lonnie. Loves a deadly weapon. Easy choice. I really like. Loves well, a actually, weapon. this is kind of two elder songs against each other, you know, technically. Yeah, but I really like "Loves a Deadly Weapon." Escape from the Island is just filler to me on that album. It, it, Escape from the Island just kind of seems unfinished. I mean, just kind of threw that on there to kind of round out the album more than anything else. Um, but I really like Love's a Deadly Weapon, that being said. So it's a it's a very easy choice. All right, Ken. Yeah, Love's a Deadly Weapon is is better. Um, though I, I, I like Escape from the Island as a you know, cool little jam, you know, yeah. instrumental too. I think it's mm -hmm. cool, well played, and... Uh, you know, really cool job. Nice bass by Bob Ezrin. A lot, yeah. Nice, mm -hmm. nice bass by Bob Ezrin, definitely. So, uh, but you know, it, it's kind of just like 
long as it's kind of a filler kind of a bit on uh, on uh, the elder. So, loves a deadly weapon. All right, Mark. Okay. <clears throat> now, let me let me just. Uh... No, here it comes. <laughs> let me just preface this by saying again <laughs> that this is this is not again anything to do with Bob this time, but I'll say this. If it was the version that they did during the elder demos of Love's a Deadly Weapon, I love that version of the song. When I heard this version of it on the side, I'm like, ugh, I thought they ruined it. I don't like the, the double kick upbeat thing. I thought there was a much better groove on the elder version of the song. I thought it rocked better. This one just seemed like, you know, let's just put some double kick in so it sounds really 80-ish. And it, it's... I don't like it as much as that version of it. So I'm going to actually go with Escape from the Island because I I think that that's kind of an interesting little jam. It's one of the things that Bob did that isn't terrible on the album. And I, I just, it's mainly because I don't like that version compared to the original demo that they did of that song. So I'm, I don't want to vote for that. So you, you're voting for Escape because you yeah. really love Bob Azarin. So, <laughs> all right, Daniel. Whoa, 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 love's a deadly weapon. It was way too poppy. I mm. I really love the uh, 80s version. Uh, even though it's it's a good 80s song, uh, Escape from the Island, I think, could have become a great song. I, I like it more than the other A song. Um, Dark what's Light. It called? Yeah, Dark Light. Mm. I think if, if they could have put some vocals on Escape from the Island and, uh, you know, put some more effort into, um, you know, creating something magic there, I think it could, uh, because I like the riff and I like, but it's more like a jam, a jam session, as as Ken said. Uh, I think he really hit the nail on the head because uh, it's more like a jam. Why Love's a Deadly Weapon is, you know, you have the sinister Gene once again, the screams are awesome. I always like Gene's screams, you know, Fish Like a Glove Scream and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So this is like a sort of a sister song to Fish Like a Glove. I, I, I like it a lot. So Love's a Little Weapon. All right. You decided it. So my voice doesn't matter. Sure it does. Much. Sure it does, Julian. What's your pick? I'm, I'm very conflicted because <laughs> I also prefer the original demo of Love's a Deadly Weapon before it gets the plasmatics ass tacked the onto us. Um <laughs> But it's, I didn't know that when I first heard it, and I loved it. So, you know, Escape from the Island is a fun jam, and I love playing that on the guitar. Mm-hmm. And, you know, but Loves a Deadly Weapon is a really good song. So, Deadly, for me. Okay. All right. So I fell behind. I was zoning out and <laughs> picking the next songs. All right. So next one up is I'm Alive. It's Alive. I'm Alive. Versus a world without heroes. Easy. Daniel. Uh, I'm alive. One of two weak songs on the side of Raider for Love and I'm Alive, I think, are a bit weaker than the rest. While a world without heroes, when I heard the 95 or 96 album, you know, Kiss Unplugged. I really thought it was a great song. Uh, I might have missed it before because I thought the uh, video was really tacky and I never got into The Elder. But when I heard it in 96 on MTV Unplugged, I I thought this is a pretty good song. So uh, for me, it's actually a world without heroes. All right, Ken. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Daniel. Uh, a world without heroes, to me, easily beats I'm Alive. Uh, sure, I'm Alive is just a straight ahead kind of crazy rocker, you know, but it's kind of like a, a, a easy song for Paul to just, th- you know, write. You know, he did a few of those type songs in the 80s, and it just kind of, to me, is that song was kind of a throwaway for Paul. Um, and so, a world without heroes is a much better song than performance. <laughs> Mark is showing the terrible video. You no, know, it's definitely world. Gene's gonna heroes. cry. Yeah, just for just for the tear at the end alone. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm I'm alive is one of the weaker songs in my opinion off of Asylum, where this is one of the stronger ones off of 
the elder, um, it's it, it's an easy pick for me. All right, Mark. Yeah, uh, I think for the first time I'm going to go with the with the majority wow. on this one. Uh, I mean, I'm alive. Is, you know, it's okay. I mean, it's not a bad song. It's you know, but nothing to write home about. And you know, th this song, from a songwriter's perspective, is is, is a decently written song. But it, again, it just was to me. It was a bit surprising. Uh, you know, you would have expected maybe a song like this for Paul to sing, not Gene. But you know, but it's still, it's still a better overall. I think it's a better song. So. Sorry, I just picked the next ones while you were doing that. Yeah, yeah. I thought Julian was laughing at you. <laughs> a, a World Without Heroes, Gene's version of Beth, but it's a beautiful song. It's exquisite, well-crafted. Uh, nice reading material there, Daniel. Um, yeah. What are you reading? Where'd I'm you Alive. That? I'm Alive is filler, and there's no other way around um, yeah. you know, describing it. Let's move on to the next uh, round. Tears Are Falling versus Fanfare. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> the, the one I do we have to vote? Get a free pass into the. Do we next have round. to vote? I mean, that. do we have to mark? No. What do you, what do you, you to go with? Fanfare, the exquisite. Uh, it's no. actually genius. Fanfare I, I'm gonna for go. The... I'm gonna go with this one, because this is actually probably one of my favorite songs on the album. I think it has probably one of Bruce Kulick's best guitar solos that oh, he's yeah. done yeah. on an album. And look at those gloves, man. Come on. Look at that. He has one of Gene's best outfits ever, too. Look at that. Come on. One of Gene's best wigs, too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The, the outfits on this are top, top-notch stuff. And the special effects there with the glass breaking there, come on. You know? And look at look at that. Look at that. Gene right? looks so bad. Tell you he looks so bad. <laughs> he looks like well, Kevin DeBro's he... older yeah. brother. Put the makeup yeah, back yeah, on, exactly. I guess. Older, uglier watching, brother. Watching this video in 85, <laughs> it was the coolest ever, you know. So for me, it's also Tears of Falling, of course. But but watching this video, I, I mean, I got the goosebumps when I saw this. But I hadn't seen much before. But but prior to that, I hadn't seen a lot of videos. But this one just, ooh. First I heard Heavens on Fire, and then this I saw this video on sw Swedish television, and I was hooked for life. So I kind of still think it's a cool video. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I, I, For its time. I think it's, it's the best one of the album, as, uh, at least. But um, Tears of Falling is just a great song. And I, I love that they played it when I watched uh, a Kiss concert a few weeks back, back. You know, they had Lick It Up, Heaven on Fire, and Tears of Falling. And I guess those were the years when I really got into Kiss, so it was great seeing it live, and it was just awesome. So Tears of Falling is a 10 out of 10. Long yes. Yeah, tear, Tears of Falling, come on. It's a fantastic song, and it's crap on the other side. So. Ken? Yeah, fanfare. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, not really. For the for the ship horns or whatever it was in it. Anyway, no. Uh, tears are falling. The song that made me a Kiss fan. Tears are falling. There you go. And I zoned out again. God, I'm tired today. <clears throat> All right. This is the last one. Uh, All night. <laughs> Versus. Under the road. You're right. All right, Big Mouth. You you called it. You started it, Daniel. Big Mouth. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll see. Um, well, under the Rose. No way. No way I'd pick Under the Rose what? over any song off of Asylum. Oh, come on. You have to be G Ken in order to do that. But You might just do it, too. I'll, I'll, yeah, mm. I'll go for the Asylum song well, uh, all night. I think it's kind of fun. It's 80s cheese, of course, but I kind of like 80s cheese. Okay. And uh, I think this song is a fun song. Um, nothing special, but uh, I remember as a kid, uh, I thought it was really cool. Now I just think it's kind of fun, but it's at least way better than the, the elder stuff. All right, so that was uh, okay. Uh, Ken. Yeah, for me, it's Under the Rose. Uh, it's, it's That's one of my favorite songs off The Elder. Um, <clears throat> great. Just a great riff. Great riff. And uh, sure, yeah, you got the vocals like uh, 
kind of the gang <clears throat> choir men vocals in part of the song but uh i i think it's great just a great song well well sung by gene um and then the guitar solo was awesome just a very tasty nice uh guitar solo in there that totally fits the song um totally love it and i like how it connects with only you you know and just kind of goes right into it um just a real cool song one of my favorites Lonnie. Mm, no, I'm gonna go uh, all night, <laughs> not under the rose. I, I I knew Ken would like under the rose, but um, I, I'm 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 with Daniel. I think uh, all night is, is is fun. It's an '80s like sleaze type song. You know, I mean, look look what was popular. Like with Poison, like Talk Dirty to Me was popular at the time. You know songs in that kind of vein so it was kiss kind of doing their own take on that and and it works for the time period maybe it doesn't work in in 2022 but it definitely worked in 1985 so it's all night all right mark well i mean i i don't think there's any competition in this it's all night for me i mean this this is this is one of those songs that represents everything that i love about kiss it's fun you know it doesn't take itself too seriously it has great guitar playing in it you know, I, I, you know, the look when you're young and you're a young guy and you're watching videos like this and, you know, you're thinking this is the greatest thing you've seen on TV. So, but this is a, this is a live tour thing I'm showing right now. But, uh, yeah, I, I just you look know, under the rose is a decent song. But again, it's one of those songs where they're trying to be overly serious, trying to be something that they weren't. And I just think compared to this stuff, this is what Kiss is, not under the rose. All right, all night again, fourteen year old me. There's uh, Under the Rose, I actually do like a lot, um, but 14 uh, year old me overrules any, you know, logic. So uh, that, me that means he's fairly gets a free pass into the, uh, the uh, bonus round. Dark Light was not selected in any of these uh, idiotic matchups fine. today. But um, all right, let's okay. just give, give everyone a recap. Uh, Radar for Love versus I. I wins. King of the Mountain versus Just a Boy. Yeah, I don't even need to tell you the answer to that. Um, who Wants to Be Lonely versus Mr. Blackwell. Oh, yeah, I can read better about that, at least. Um, maybe I can't. <laughs> um, Secretly Cruel versus Odyssey. Secretly Cruel wins. Any Way You Slice It versus The Oath. The Oath. Uh, Trial by Fire versus Only You. Trial by Fire. De uh, Loves a Deadly Weapon versus Escape from the Island. Deadly Weapon. I'm Alive versus A World Without Heroes. Heroes Never Die. Tears Are Falling versus Fanfare. Fanfare goes through. Oh, no, sorry. Tears no. Are Falling. Um, and uh, All Night versus Under the Rose with uh, All Night for the Wind. So that's how the, uh, the cookie crumbles. So let's pick the albums that are going to face off in oh. the next round when we get oh, around boy. to it. Everyone stay quiet because <laughs> you know what happens when you speak. Don't say rock and roll over. Damn it, Ken. What did I say? Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh. Versus anyone else want to speak? Lonnie? No, no, thank you. Hot in the shade. No, I don't want to say anything. It's going to be a landslide no matter what it is. Hot in the shade. I don't know Monster. Dress to Kill. Oh. Oh, that's good, actually. That's going to be a good battle. We've got some oh, makeup on makeup action going down in the, mm -hmm. the yeah, next death good. match, which that's good. is going to be interesting because I can think of strength and weaknesses on both of those, but we yeah. just never know how the matchups are going to kind of go down. Interesting. So I, have a, I think there's a lot to fear with that one, but I think it will be... It'll be good. So there we are. I mean, for everyone who's watched, we do appreciate you watching. What are your thoughts on some of those matchups? Again, they're, they're not set up in any way. They all come out of a jar, and that is what we get to uh, kind of um, face off with. And it is emotion versus intellect in some cases. Some of these songs have close meanings to us as fans. Other ones we just love as songs. Or, you know, as Daniel said when he saw the band in Stockholm, he got to hear Tears Are Falling live in, uh, you know, 2022, 37 years after it came out on album. And you're still getting to hear a song off Asylum in the set. And that 
says to me that Paul Stanley says that that's an underrated and underappreciated song if he's using that as a vehicle during the end of the road tour. So let us know what you what you would have voted. Do you agree with us? Uh, who got it right? Who got it wrong? Let us know. And uh, also let us know what you think is going to happen with the next match of a few shows down the road. Mm. But for now, that's it. Go watch Largo. Enjoy it. Who knows what else you get to see over the forthcoming weeks. Um, that's it from Daniel, Ken, Lonnie, Mark, and myself. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. No tears for missing out on Love Gun merch. You can buy it on eBay for 800 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you for spending time listening to the Kiss FAQ podcast today. All sales are final. There are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.